primary aldosteronism is the topic. And uh, before we get started, I think it's important to talk a little bit about aldosterone. Uh, what exactly is it, since uh, we're talking about a condition where there's elevated levels? Well, aldosterone is a hormone, and it comes from the adrenal cortex. And this hormone is a very important one because it acts on the kidney. And what I'm going to do is just draw a very basic diagram of a nephron, which is uh, the unit component of a kidney. And this is essentially a, one of the many, perhaps million, nephrons in the kidney. And the hormone aldosterone works right here on a segment of the nephron known as the DCT. And the DCT stands for distal convoluted tubule. And what aldosterone does is it essentially brings back sodium from the urine into the bloodstream and it kicks out potassium. And that's essentially well, what aldosterone does. Now when you bring back sodium, water comes back with it. So that's the fundamental uh, uh, action of the hormone aldosterone on the kidney. Now when you have elevated levels of sodium and water in the bloodstream, that will raise the person's blood pressure. And of course I'll talk a little bit more about that. Now another uh, molecule I would like to talk about is renin. And renin is an enzyme and it comes from the kidney and what happens is when the kidney senses that the blood volume is low it will secrete renin. And renin through a very long complicated process eventually leads to aldosterone being secreted from the adrenal cortex. Now when we talk about primary hyperaldosteronism, which is the topic of this video, primary aldosteronism, it can be due to uh, a couple of reasons. The first reason is if there is a tumor in the adrenal gland, so an adrenal adenoma, and that is given actually a special name named after the physician who discovered it and it's called Kahn syndrome. Kahn is the physician's last name. The next reason why you can have primary aldosteronism is if you have adrenal hyperplasia and the reason there's a distinction that I wanted to uh, illustrate is because the treatment is slightly different for tumors versus hyperplasia. Tumors are treated surgically and hyperplasia is treated with medication and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So what are the symptoms involved in primary aldosteronism? Well without a doubt high blood pressure will be a presenting factor due to the fact that you have all this water coming back. Hypervolemia. Now in terms of symptoms, a patient may present with some of these paresthesias, paralysis, and muscle weakness. Now you might wonder well, why, what is the reason for these symptoms? Well if you recall, aldosterone is kicking out potassium, so these symptoms are due to hypokalemia. Low potassium in the blood. So how do you diagnose this? Well fortunately there's some very basic tests such as electrolyte levels and of course you're measuring the sodium, potassium. Sodium level in the blood will be high but it might be normal and the reason it's normal is because remember water is coming back too so that can kind of balance, balance things out a bit. Potassium of course will be low so you have hypernatremia and hypokalemia Another thing you measure is aldosterone, and of course this will be high. And another 
uh, enzyme that you uh, measure is the renin and renin will be low because the kidney senses that there's high blood pressure and, and that uh, results in the renin levels being low and sometimes you can do a ratio of these aldosterone to renin level and then of course if uh, you really need to get to the bottom of things you have to do some sort of imaging to detect that tumor and most commonly a CT of the abdomen is done to detect the tumor so finally what's the treatment well if it was a adenoma then the treatment is surgical surgical removal of the tumor and if it was hyperplasia as a cause adrenal hyperplasia then of course that's going to be treated with the medication and the medication that you use is known as spironolactone and this medication is an aldosterone antagonist and it helps block the um, action of the excessive levels of aldosterone that can be present in adrenal hyperplasia well, let's now take a look at a few clinical vignettes. 35-year-old woman presents to you with blood pressure readings of 150 over 100, 145 over 98, and 160 over 95 on three successive days. A routine metabolic panel profile shows normal BU and creatinine, blood sugar, sodium, chloride, bicarb, but a potassium level of 2.8. She denies diarrhea, vomiting, past or present fistula or enterostomy, or taking any prescription medications. Which of the following types of hypertension is most likely present? Well, she obviously has high blood pressure, and she's got a potassium of 2.8, normals between uh, 3.5 to 5.0. She's got hypokalemia and high blood pressure. What's interesting is sodium level is normal. You'd probably think, well, why isn't the sodium level high? Well, sometimes it's normal because the water comes back as well and, you know, balance, balances things out. But no doubt she's got a secondary cause because in normal essential hypertension, you don't have these electrolyte abnormalities. So she's got high, secondary hypertension and this needs to be explored. And if you just look at the basic mechanism of action of aldosterone, it's very easy to predict that it's the aldosterone that's causing the hypokalemia so until proven otherwise most likely present is primary aldosteronism next question a 48 year old female presents as a new patient to your office she has not seen a physician for several years and her medical history is unknown BMI is 24 she's not taking any medications blood pressure is 172 over 110 in the left arm sitting and 176 over 114 in the right arm sitting. Cardiovascular exam is otherwise unremarkable. A baseline metabolic panel reveals a creatinine level of 0 0.68 and a potassium level of 3.3. If the patient's hypertension should prove refractory to treatment, which one of the following tests is most likely to reveal the cause of her secondary hypertension? Well, very similar question to the previous one, but here they're asking you what kind of tests well they've already done the electrolytes so that test has been done next if I'm if I'm uh, uh, suspicious of a primary aldosteronism I would order an aldosterone level and I'd order a renin level and then later I would do some imaging but these two tests are relatively less expensive than imaging so I'd probably do that next and that would be choice B and as I mentioned earlier in the video sometimes they do it as a ratio and then finally a 36 year old man is admitted to the hospital for severe hypertension he has had high blood pressure for the past three years that has been very difficult to control there is no history of hypertension in his family and he has no other medical problems 
His current meds include hydralazine, amlodipine, and atenolol. Blood pressure logbook that he keeps at home shows that his daily blood pressures have been on average 180 over 90. Today he was admitted for a blood pressure of 220 over 120 with a pulse of 82. Physical exam, he is appropriately anxious but in no distress. His fundi are clear with no evidence of papilledema. His heart exam is benign. EKG shows left ventricular hypertrophy at 80 beats per minute and no strain pattern. Lab studies show sodium of 151, potassium 2.6, bicarb 28, BUN 10, creatinine 0 0.8. Most appropriate diagnostic test at this time. Well, he's got hypernatremia. Normal sodium is like 135 to 145, so he definitely has hypernatremia. And he's got hypokalemia. So just think aldosterone and you can figure out. Uh, and this is a good uh, question because I like it because it's a little bit more, uh, gives you a little bit more information because he does indeed have high sodium levels as well in addition to the hypokalemia. So it, it kind of helps you uh, think more of aldosterone. Well, let's see what choices they give us. Well, without a doubt, you have to do some sort of imaging that will look at the adrenal gland. Mo most likely, you know, you're looking for an adenoma. And that is accomplished by doing an abdominal CT. And that would be choice A.